So I think we are all set. Uh, uh, we are now live. So this is being recorded. So, uh, well, let's uh, welcome Peter, uh, Peter Liu to our group meeting. And uh, uh, Peter, as I understand it, you did your, did you do your PhD at UC San Diego? With Tarun that's Grover, right. I see you have a lot of papers with Tarun Grover. So, uh, no, that's uh, great. Yeah, Tarun's yeah, he a wonderful. Must have the I don't know if anybody else knows Tarun Grover, but he's a wonderful uh, 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 physicist. He's very creative, in my opinion, and uh, uh, you're lucky to have had him as a PhD advisor. Uh, hope that went Definitely. well. Um, and now I understand you're in. Uh oh, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of noise around here. <laughs> Maybe I'll, I'll quickly introduce you, and then I'll hit mute. Uh, hopefully, it won't last too long. But anyways, uh, so I understand uh, you're now a postdoc at Perimeter Institute, uh, and you've been working with Timothy Timothy C. Is that right? And yeah. is there anything else in your background that I I have missed? Uh, maybe that should be all. Yeah, that should be. Okay, and uh, and <laughs> yeah. and so Peter's research is at the interface between quantum information and condensed matter physics. So you know, right down in the in, lot of the interests that we have in our group, uh, he has. Uh, mm -hmm. I, if you just look up his name on Google Scholar, you'll find ten papers you'll want to read. I think it's uh, he's got a nice background in this in this area, um, and so today you're going to tell us uh, uh, about. Um, uh, quantum orders and hold on criticality from measurement and feedback and as I understand it this is is this this is part of the the, uh, the there's an area of of trying to uh, uh, create quantum states not using just unitary evolution but also adding measurements to to the uh, uh, circuit and and get over the limitations of what a unitary, a finite a constant depth unitary circuit is capable of, of doing. Um, and, and I know, I don't know if other, everybody else is aware of this, but you know, like a common example is if you wanted to create a topological state that you would need to have exponentially long uh, circuit in order to, to actually generate a, a topological state, which would be impossible in a you know, macroscopic system. And so, uh, uh, you know, so you, but, but if you add measurements, you might be able to do it in a couple, of, some, some of the topological states, you might be able to, to create them in a couple of, uh, just a couple of layers. Um, and, uh, and, you know, so people, I've often heard people talk about, um, you know, finite depth, it's what can you, you know, if you can't prepare, sort of like preparing things in a finite depth circuit, it, it, being not unable to prepare something in a finite depth circuit is kind of like a, like a definition of topological state, but of course it applies to many other interesting states, right? So you're going to tell us about mm -hmm. like a, a critical states, if I understand it, and you, 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 a constant depth circuit may not uh, uh, do the trick, but uh, if you add measurements, then maybe it will. So anyways, I thought it was a very interesting topic, uh, and I look forward to the, the talk. Um, so let me let you uh, take it away, and I'll hit mute so that I, I can figure out how to hit mute. I will hit mute. Uh, there it is. Right, and uh, maybe let me try to share my screen. Yes. Um, and let's uh, hope for the best. Please, mm -hmm. uh, please uh, take it take it from here, uh, Peter. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. So thanks thanks again for inviting me to attend this uh, group meeting and give a talk here. Yeah, so as I understand, this is pretty informal. So please feel free to interrupt me at any time and ask questions or any comment you might have. Yeah, and then we'll see how far we'll go. Yeah, so today I'm gonna tell you about some, you know, some uh, interesting aspects about like using projective measurements and how this can be a very useful tool to realize many interesting long-range order states of matter and even some critical states of matter which cannot be realized in finite depth unitary circuit. So we have some better understanding about the usage of the projective measurements. And um, so this uh, done in collaboration with a uh, bunch of uh, brilliant people. So including Zahao and Saka from Santa Barbara, uh, Isaac Kim from UC Davis, and Leo and Tim from Perimeter. Yeah. 
So let me say the stage by saying that, you know, in the study of quantum matter, we care about like what's kind of emergent behavior, so collective behavior when you have many quantum particles together, they have some interactions. And because of that, we can have some interesting examples of uh, non-trivial states, like fractional quantum hole physics, superconductivity, and some interesting quantum criticality that occurs in the quantum phase transition, you know, between different quantum phases. So those are the interesting thing we kind of love and care about, right? That is a conventional scope for quantum matter study. On the other hand, we also see some rapid recent progress on various quantum devices. For example, we have this uh, trapped ion quantum computer and also have this uh, superconducting qubits. So in this uh, near-term quantum devices, what you have is you can have a bunch of qubits you can use. You can apply the local unitary gate. You can apply the mid-circuit measurements. So those are ingredients available uh, for these uh, quantum devices, right? Oh, by the way, so uh, are you recording or is, is it all good? I believe so. If uh, it, oops. I believe uh, so. You, I think you yeah, are. I was muted, sorry. I would believe so. Um, it's worth checking YouTube that this is all happening, but it should be. Oh, I see. So you are not recording using Zoom, I see. Right, 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 right. I'm recording through, uh, right, exactly. <laughs> Sneakily, yeah, sure. okay, I'm recording yeah. in a sneaky way. It's ha It should be happening. Uh, uh, I see. It. Okay, then it's just, just checking. Yeah, that's good. And I'll just continue. Yeah, it yeah. looks like it's live. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So basically, in these uh, quantum devices, these are the ingredient the ingredient available, right? So then that really motivates the question: like, in these quantum devices, can we artificially try to engineer or some real uh, realize some non-trivial states of matter, right? In this uh, quantum platform, and that is kind of important because many interesting states which those may be hard to find in nature, right? But then in these um, quantum devices, you really have a bottom-up approach to prepare this kind of interesting states of matter that is very good for many body physics as a fundamental standpoint. So by these uh, non-trivial states, typically we refer to those uh, long-range entangled states of matter. And the canonical example is given by the chocolate order, which is the underlying order for many quantum spin liquids. And in this kind of order, there's no like uh, local order parameters. So this is very, very different from the conventional like uh, ferromagnetic icing model, right? You can just measure the local ma magnetization, then you can know whether it's spontaneous break the symmetry or not. But in this quantum, or quantum topological order, the order is kind of encoded in a non-local way. So it's kind of exotic in that sense. In particular, it also holds the so-called fractionalized quasi particles that are called anions. So anions, those are interesting particles and the building structure is different from, it's neither fermionic or bosonic. And in particular, when you bred to um, anions, they can have some non-trivial breeding phase. And that is also related to the quantum computing because it, in this kind of topological order system, you can try to encode the information in the ground subspace of some Hamiltonian and that encoded information will be robust under some local noise. Yeah, so there are many interesting, there are different aspects about, you know, why we care about topological quantum order. And the second example I will talk about is those uh, quantum critical states that occur at a quantum uh, critical point, uh, separating between two different quantum phases, for example. And one feature of those kind of states is that it has some interesting quantum correlation at different land scales, in all land scales, basically. Yeah. And um, by being non-trivial states, a defining uh, de like a definition is that you may imagine you start from a trivial product state where every spin is pointing up or pointing down, right? And then when time scales on, you just apply some you know, neighboring, say, two body, you know, local unitary gate. And then you ask, okay, in this uh, circuit-based approach, how long does it take to prepare this kind of non-trivial states of matter in the local unitary circuit? So it turns out in these uh, non-trivial states of matter, then basically you always need a time that scale with the system size to prepare in any local unitary circuit. So the idea is just that because in this uh, non-trivial state, you could imagine there are some long range order with the length scale of the system size. And the local unitary dynamics will have this uh, light cone, right? 
So in order to connect, so basically that means that means that there's a maximum constant speed at which you can propagate correlations. So that just means that if you have two distance points separating very far away from each other, the time you need to create a correlation when you scale the separation. So that means that it is a long range order with a length scale with the, of the system size. The separation time needs to scale with the system size as well, mm. in a polynomial fashion at least. But then that is pretty bad. Why? Because you can imagine if it takes take such a long time to prepare the state, you suffer from the decoherence from the environment, right? So that is so that means most likely you will not get the state you want. So then is there any other working around that is, is there any way to uh, avoid this uh, fundamental restriction of the local unitary dynamics? So it turns out we can use a uh, local measurement, which is a non-unitary process. And with this uh, novel ingredients, many long range order states are possible right now in all the one time or local time. So you, you, it, it is much faster than polynomial in the system size time. Yeah, so that is the main message of this talk using local measurement as a novel ingredient. So if you really think about it, it's kind of interesting, right? Because as we all know from the from the first class of the quantum mechanics, we know when you have some coherence, quantum coherence, like you have a cat and it can be a superposition of a live cat and a dead cat, right? Mm -hmm. Then when you try to do some local measurement, you try to monitor the state of the cat, what you get is you get two possible outcomes, right? You can either get a live cat or you can get a dead cat. But the main message is that when you do the local measurements, you try to actually try to destroy entanglement and coherence in this uh, many body system, right? So how is that possible measurement can give you some, you know, some 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 positive, you know, some ways of uh, you know boosting the long range order or long range entanglement? So the way to think about it is um, with proper use of the local measurements because it is a non unitary process. So one can efficiently manipulate the entanglement structure of a quantum state. So you should imagine this is a very abrupt way to manipulate entanglement structures. So many long range order is possible in order, in order one time. So that is the first vague intuition uh, uh, good to keep in mind. Yeah, so here's the outline of this talk. And again, feel free to uh, interrupt me with any questions. So basically, we have some novel, interesting ways of uh, using uh, local unitaries, uh, local measurements, and the non-local class of communication. So with this uh, ingredient, I'm going to show you, you can realize many interesting order and the criticality in a very uh, short time. So the first part, focus on circuits. That means, start from some trivial product state, we can deterministically prepare some pure state which may have some interesting long range order criticality. And the second part, we'll focus on using this ingredient to construct some interesting quantum channel. So that means that we're gonna take a pure state, simple pure state to realize some mixed state, which may have some interesting long range order criticality. Yeah, so those, these are the outline I will uh, be talking about in this talk. Yeah. All right, so let me focus on the first part. So the idea is basically this uh, local adaptive circuit. So yeah, this figure basically summarizes the main ingredients. So imagine you have some physical spin chain, right, say in 1D, and then you are allowed to add some ancillars. And uh, in the first layer of the circuit, say you consider the neighboring you know, unitary gates in these uh, blue uh, blocks. So those are just the local unitary gate. In, in the second layer, you apply the local measurements, which can be single side measurement or two sides measurements, acting on some spins, for example. And then importantly, if you do this in local measurements, you cannot control the out measurement outcome, right? But then the important thing is you are gonna record a uh, loss measurement outcome in some classical computer, for example. Mm -hmm. And then in the future of the unitary, the local unitary, the choice of this uh, local unitary will depend on the entire uh, measurement outcome you previously recorded in some register. So the choice of the local unitary is, is adapted to the measurement outcome. So in such a way that no matter what outcome you get, you can always apply some appropriate local unitaries so that you can deterministically prepare the targets that you want, which may have some interesting range order we care about. 
Yeah, so that is the main idea. You do the local measurement. You yeah. How, how local are these local measurements? Are these like single qubit or like two qubit measurements? Oh, it, it can be some single qubit measurement. Say you select some some subsets of the qubit, and for those subsets of qubit, just do the single size qubit measurements. I yeah, so it's it it really to be some kind of like uh, like you know measuring some like stabilizer operators like in error correction. Uh, yeah, it's a, it may be different from that. Yeah, so this is a modular modular protocol. Yeah, so right now when we mean this uh, local measurement, it can be some single site or multi site, mm -hmm. but the number site measure is like order one. Yeah, because those are the simple thing we can do in in the experiment. Yeah, yeah. Th thanks for the uh, question. Yeah, actually, I'll another I had another question. So, what's the role of the ancilla? Why do you need to have them? Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good question. So. Let's see. Mm. Yeah, so it depends on the protocol, but in some protocol, we, we necessarily use this ancilla as a, as a way so that uh, when you, yeah, so later on, I will discuss the exact protocol where, say, you want to connect, you want to create an order between two distance particles. Then the way you do that is you introduce an ancilla. And you use this ancilla as a as a portal, so you can teleport information from here to here, and then you do the local measurement, and then you teleport it back using this ancilla spin chain. So this ancilla is provides a more flexible way of teleporting information and propagating information. I see that's that is the fancy. intuition. That's pretty fancy. All right, sounds good. Yeah. So hopefully later on you you will understand the the detail for the code. Yeah. And but I also let me emphasize that you know this uh, like, this kind of local adaptive circuits has been discussed in the, in the literatures, yeah. But then what interesting is there are more. So in this uh, paper uh, with with Leo and 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 Isaac and and Tin, so basically we come up with the different more classes of uh, adaptive circuits where you know based on different physical insights familiar with the condensed matter people. Involving this uh, tensor network, entanglement, renormalization, and the proton construction. So yeah, it's just pretty pretty striking that using local management, you can have different ways of you can using local management, and that can give you different different plus for preparing different order of criticality. So in order one time, you can already prepare different topological orders, and some can be uh, chiral or non abelian topological order, which is more exotic. And if you consider log L time preparation, which is not too bad, practically speaking, you can prepare any non abelian order and the more fancy kind of uh, topological order states of matter and even some critical states. Yeah, so it really opens up a way of uh, using local measurements to do some, you know, interesting states preparation task. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, so right now, and uh, let me also mention that. Uh, yeah, so indeed, this kind of adaptive circuit uh, has been realized in uh, quite recently, basically in the uh, February. So there's so in the first, so in the top, it is our work with um, continuum people where they use this uh, triple ion quantum computer. So it really demonstrates this adaptive protocol, protocol um, as a way to surpass the original unitary circuit preparation. Yeah, and at the same time, there's a, also a work with by uh, continuum Harvard group. Yeah, but basically, I don't want to go into any details. But the main message is, is that it is a real thing happening right now. So it is a very good time to think about this identity protocol mm -hmm. to prepare long range order states of matter. Mm. Yeah. So let me uh, proceed with this um, the first idea inspired by the Tesla network. And for this, I just want to give you a simple example that is the 2D Turing code, which had this uh, Z2 topological order uh, introduced by Pitaya. So to define the state, it's very simple. You consider a square lattice, and on every link of the lattice, you put a qubit. And you consider that the 2 d turco state is basically the sum of loops. It is a superposition of loops, where each loop is like a product state configuration basis. So you, have, you can have different choice of loops, right? Say so when you choose this kind of loop, that means every spin along the loop is going to be pointing down. Otherwise, it is pointing up. Yeah. So apparently there are so many number of choices on the loop, right? And then the state is non-trivial in the sense that you are gonna consider the equal weights as well position of those loop configuration. And that 
not give you the lo the so called C two to go to other states, and uh, this state cannot be prepared in the finite time. Uh, local industry dynamics, yeah. And um, what is the idea based on test network? So to prepare such a state, let, let me introduce like you can have a state of four spins, and you can a wave function so that it is a superposition of an even number of spin now. So basically, when you consider the wave function, then it is equal to one if there's an even number of spin down. Otherwise, it is equal to zero. So for example, it is a state of four spin. Say so it can be, when you consider the state, it is like the sum of a zero spin down state, four spin down state, and two spin down state. And there are you know, all these um, choices. And by the red link, that represent a spin is uh, pointing down. And this it only involves all the one number of spins, so it can, you can do this uh, easily in the lab, right? So, so let me call this to be the building block. And as it turns out, you can simultaneously prepare many such building blocks because they are decoupled, right? So you can do this in parallel. So you can prepare this kind of decoupled state in all one time. Yeah, so those are the building blocks we're gonna have. And um, right now you consider the so-called uh, two-body ZZ measurement. So basically you could imagine for this uh, two qubits, uh, you imagine they belong to the link of a square lattice, right? So this is a, this is a link which has two qubits. And you consider this, uh, you measure the Z1, Z2 operator for this uh, two qubits. And of course, if you measure the, this operator, it's a poly operators, you're gonna get two outcome, which can be plus or minus one, right? So if you get an outcome to be one, that means you're gonna do the projection one plus Z, Z over two. Otherwise, you're gonna do the one minus Z, Z over two, right? And then you can imagine, you do simultaneously do this uh, two body Z, Z measurement across the entire uh, lattice. Right, and then the claim is, if the outcome measurement outcome everywhere is equal to one, you realize the perfect uh, Z two torical order state of matter. So one way to think about it is um, when you do the this uh, two body Z Z measurements, when the outcome is equal to one, that means in the computational basis, these two spin will be blocked to the same direction. Right, they are they can be fused to the send single effective qubits that can be either pointing up or either pointing down. So in this way, you, you use the two-body Z measurement to try to fill, fill some different building blocks together to form a many body state. And the claim is, uh, if the outcome is equal to one, you realize the perfect C2 total order state. And also one way to see that is, uh, in that case, in that case, this is the state you get. You prepare some initial product state, right? You apply the ZZ measurements, and you will inform this uh, projector. And then, if you try to expand in the computational basis, that basically means that because for each building block, there's only an even number of spin down you can have, right? And then, because the two spin will be locked into the same direction, so this uh, even number of spin down will propagate from here to here to the another vertices. And uh, so, basically, this condition plus even number of spin down on every vertices, like those two conditions guarantee you're gonna get a Z2 torical order. So this is a sum of a different order possible loop state. So and this is so this is you can check this as a Z2 torical order state. Yeah. Um, so far so good. Yeah, so basically just do the I left a message in the chat, but it's noisy here. Sorry. Message in the chat. Oh. Ah, yeah, that's a good question. So, it, it, yeah, so we can extend this uh, tensor protocol to more uh, type of states, which have some also has some tensor representation. And I will discuss, discuss mention those example. But it turns out those. Um, um, it is not applicable. It, it doesn't apply to arbitrary tensor network states. So the tensor network need to have some structure so that you can deterministically prepare those states, and which I will mention in, in just a moment. Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, yeah. So let me also mention that because certainly when you do this, this uh, two body ZZ measurement, you cannot control the outcome. So you may have the outcome to be minus one, 
and it turns out that this uh, minus one outcome, say it, it appears here and it appears here, then they will kind of pair. But then you can just record the measurement outcome. So then you can apply some underside unitary to correct the errors. Yeah. So no matter what outcome you get, you can always do some simple unitary correction to get a desired uh, Z2 protocol order state. Yeah. And um, yeah, this is all related to Michael's question because in order states have the Exotic fraction order. Aubrey represented on presentation, so all of this can be prepared all the one time uh, using this our approach. Yeah. And um, so one, I guess, um, advantage is if all million blocks, then when you want to form a many body state, you just put them together and do the this uh, local ZZ measurement to form a many body state, which have some interesting low range order. Yeah. All, set. All right. The so let me move on everything. to the second protocol inspired by the so called MERA, that is the multi scale entanglement renormalization ANSAS uh, introduced by Badal. So basically, one highlight of this protocol is that we can prepare any critical state and the level one students model uh, in log L Jeff. Yeah, maybe it might be a bit technical, but uh, yeah, let me just briefly mention the idea of the mirror uh, as a review. So basically, you could imagine if you have a full many body wave function on the lattice, we call that to be the UV, right? And right now, Mera gives you a recipe to do the entanglement renormalization. Uh, so basically, you can imagine if you put some, some stuff on some uh, quantum state on the UV lattice, you can systematically do some local operations. Then you can try to get rid of some short distance entanglements. And so when you go some from the bottom to the top, you, you decrease the number of spin, right? As you can see here. And then, so by systematically doing it this way, you can extract the long distance entanglement structure. So it generates RG flow from UV to IR. And um, another nice way to think about MERA is it is also a unitary circuit of log L jab. But then the, the difficulty is that it is non local, right? Because as you can see here, in the higher level of the hierarchy, you require uh, some gates that connect two spins, which can be very far away from each other. So it is a spatially non-local unitary circuit. But then, so the question is, how can we realize this mirror circuit? It turns out, uh -oh. required for the mirror uh, representation. Yeah, that is the idea. So, so basically, the, the main idea we use here is based on this uh, measurement-based interpretation, which has been known for the known in the quantum info community for quite some time. So basically, the idea is, say you in the particle one, you have some unknown wave function. So particle one is like a qubit, and there's an unknown wave function labeled by alpha and beta, right? And right now the task is uh, you want to teleport this information, unknown wave function from particle one to particle three. Then how do you do this? So the way to do this is you can first prepare a bell pair shared between particle two and three. And then you do the bell pair measurement for QB1 and two. So basically by bell pair measurement, that means after the measurements for the QB1 and two, they are going to be projected to one of the past four possible bell pairs. Yeah, so it can be like a R plus down, down, R down, you know, plus down, up. Yeah, this kind of four, four possible bell pairs. And the interesting is um, if you consider the measurement outcome to be like 0, 0 plus 1, 1 for the particle 1 and 2, then you know that from a straightforward calculation, you can convince yourself that the particle 3 will have the wave function as originally encoded in the particle 1. So if the measurement outcome is, is this guy, you can teleport the information from particle one to particle three. 
And um, certainly you cannot control the measurement outcome. But then the interesting is when you, if you get other measurement outcome, you know what operator you want to, you can, you need to apply on QB3 to correct errors. So the bottom line is no matter what outcome you get, you can always teleport from particle one to particle three by introducing the bell pair and then you do the bell pair measurement. Yeah, so this is a well-known uh, method to uh, do the teleportation uh, using bell pair measurement. Yeah. So right now the, the goal is in the mirror circuit, the only thing you need to do is you want to do this uh, non-local two-body unitary gates, right? So how do we how do we do this? So say you have physical spin chain, you want to apply a unitary circuit, unitary gates that act on particle A and the particle B. Then the way you do this is you introduce a bunch of uh, ancillary you introduce the ancillary spin chain, and they are consisting of the neighboring bell pairs like, like this. And then the goal is if you so given this and say that. If you do this uh, pairwise, uh, bell pair measurement, so you do the bell pair measurement between these two guys and these two guys and these two guys and these two guys. So you can do this, this uh, simultaneous bell pair measurement at the, at the same time, right? So it turns out using this uh, bell pair measurement, you can teleport the information, information from particle A to particle B prime, which is the neighbor of B. And then after this step, you just apply the local unitary gate that connects B and B prime, right? And then you, and then after this step, you just teleport it back from B prime to A. So if you do this, uh, complete this uh, cycle, you already achieve this uh, non-local unitary gates. Um, that's it is required by the mirror circuit. Yeah, so that is the main idea. And you could imagine you can just repeat this uh, protocol for different level of the, uh, for different level hierarchy of the uh, mirror circuits. So you can just realize the entire mirror circuit using purely local operations. Yeah. And uh, as we know, uh, it's been worked out by- uh, so I guess I wanted to ask this yeah. a little bit earlier, but uh, so at the, uh, how, how does Mira get rid of short range entanglement? Right. So in the mirror circuit, um, the way you do it is uh, you apply the so-called, uh, the unitary is so-called uh, disentangler. So in, in the numerical method, you try to optimize the disentangler so that you can try to get rid of as much as entanglement as possible. Oh, I see. So, so that's that. that's right. Yeah. So, so the, the unitary is chosen to reduce the uh, uh, entanglement between the two qubits. That's right. And after that step, you apply the, the W so-called isometry to get rid of the trivial degrees of freedom, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, but then as I will, yeah, as I will briefly mention, so in, the, in this uh, quantum double and surface, for example, like the theoretical state or more general, like a level one student model. So, so there, there's an exact mirror recipe. So, so in the sense that those are the fixed point wave functions, so you don't need to do any optimization. There's just an exact mirror circuit you can, you can just try to Analytically right now, so you can avoid the numerical uh, optimization. So yeah, and this that, that structure has been worked out by by these people. And the last, so that basically also means that uh, we can just re, uh, based on those uh, mirror, exact mirror structure, so we can try try to do the reverse, reverse engineering, so we can prepare those uh, interesting states of matter in log L gap uh, using the, this uh, teleportation idea. Yeah. Yeah, because the mirror structure has been known for this kind of state. Yeah, and also the critical state as well. Yeah. All right. So, so is this the link? Is this the link then between topology and and criticality that you? Uh discussed or you're going to discuss another link to uh, critical critical states oh yeah I, I guess um, yeah this mirror circuit already give you a recipe to create a critical it, right? state yeah yeah that's right that's right so this is one way but then later on I will discuss it a different way another for preparing way. the critical <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, but this is already one way you can prepare the, the critical states. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let me finally move on to this idea inspired by the so-called part-time constructions. So yeah. So one highlight is uh, you can prepare the so-called uh, chiral uh, non-abelian order in all the one time. Chiral means in the boundary of the system, you can have some chiral edge mode, like chiral edge mode, uh, which carry, carry some current, which is robust. And uh, in the bulk of the uh, bulk of the system, you can support some non-abelian anions. Yeah, so those are the interesting states of matter. And um, basically the key idea is that we can use the local measurement to try to enforce the proton constraints. Yeah, so one, um, I, I will just focus on the so-called Kita Hardington model because it is exactly solvable by proton construction. So to define this model, um, we consider some square uh, Hardington lattice and on every vertex of the Hardington lattice, there's a qubit. And then depending on orientation of the link, you can have, you can assign the XX interaction, YY interaction, and the ZZ interactions, and that define the Hardington model. And uh, at the first glance, it is hard to solve for this model because different terms don't commute. Not obvious how to solve it. But then Kita have a very clever way of solving this model by visualizing the spin into four Maran patterns. So basically, you can imagine the spin can be understood as the four patterns, which are Marianas. And then you can uh, assign a corresponding Pauli algebra in terms of the algebra of these uh, Mariana fermions. Yeah. And importantly, Okay, when you, when, you, when you assign this algebra for poly X, and poly Y, and poly Z, because there's a constraint between poly X and Y and Z, right? Say that X, X times Y times Z is equal to I times the constants, basically. So that, then that, that also implies there's a constraint between these uh, Marana patterns. So the part of those five fermions is equal to one. So those are, so, and this is the proton constraint. So what, what does it imply is, um, you can replace you can uh, replace the original poly operators by these uh, fermion operators, and then it turns out this uh, there's a simple way you can write down the Hamiltonian in terms of these uh, simple quadratic fermions, and then simple quadratic fermion we can solve. So it's just a bunch of C fermions, and there are some of the bunch of uh, Maran diamond formed by B. B. So this is a that besides zero you can solve easily, uh, very very easily, and then. That is not physical because you need to inform this uh, part-time constraint so that you can make, map uh, the state uh, back to the physical Hilbert space. So then the way to do this is uh, you prepare, you realize this uh, state, psi zero, and you inform this uh, projector, and that gives you the psi. That is the actual physical ground state of the Hardicom model. Yeah. So that is a conventional way for solving this uh, ground state of Hardicom model. But as it turns out, it also gives you a recipe to prepare uh, the states of the ground states of the uh, Hardington model. Basically, you can really imagine you have a bunch of free fermions, like a physical, physical, those are the physical ingredients. You prepare those of fermion in the state of psi zero. And then you just consider on every vertices, you do this uh, four body uh, Marana parity measurements. So if you get the measurement outcome to be one, you are good because you get one plus D over two you get a projector you want. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you get a projector you want. But if you get if you get a minus one outcome, you get a one minus D over two, you can still apply a product of an unsigned unitaries to correct those errors. So no matter what outcome you get, you can always in, enforce the correct uh, projector you want and not realize the ground state of the Hollywood model. And one interesting feature is the C fermion are in some interesting bench structure like a superconductor, like a superconductor, and in those cases, we know Kita told us that you you can prepare the characterizing any order. Yeah. So this summarizes this article. Basically, just that you consider some multi-size uh, measurements, and that can inform the proton construction, proton constraints, and that give you a handle to realize some interesting state of matter. Yeah. So this is the summary for the for this uh, proton protocol. So uh, imagine all the sites ended up giving you the right uh, parity, uh, but one site mm. failed. So then what is the, 
what is the correction you have to do to fix the uh, the wrong parity? Right, right. So, so actually, you can convince yourself that error, the error will come in pair. Say so you get an outcome okay. minus one here. But then there has to be and the outcome. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's a there must be and minus one outcome here. And then the correction is you apply the product of a unitary that is the mar mara dimers that connect in between these two errors, and those are factorized. So like a b b b b here, uh -huh. and then uh -huh. you can correct this error. I see. I see. You put a string in. Yeah, or something, and you can correct the error. That's right. That's right. You put a chain that connect two errors, uh -huh. and then that annihilate the, the errors. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So apparently, I just talk about one particular example given by Python construction, but I believe there are more general usage of the Python construction because, and we know Python has has is a general way. To, for you know, constructing different quantum spin degree, for example. Yeah, ah, right. So this would be a, this would be a great uh, achievement. But as nobody has actually act constructed, uh, like Goodswiller projected wave functions using measurements yet, is that uh, you think that's just on the horizon? It hasn't happened yet. Oh, that's a good question. So, so, so it turns out if you want to implement an ex exact Goodswiller projector, it, that that's a bit difficult because. If you get the wrong outcome, it's not obvious how you correct actually. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But somehow this Z2 structure here I discussed here, so that gives you a particular nice handle yeah. so you can correct errors. Yeah. I see, I see. Yeah, but, but later on I will discuss a, a, another protocol inspired by the Godzilla projector and, and we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So this summarizes the first part. So in this uh, protocol, you start from some simple states you can prepare, and then you can do the local measurement and the local unitaries. And then, importantly, it depends on the measure outcome, you're going to apply some appropriate unitaries so you can deterministically prepare the state you want. So that is the deterministic uh, circuit preparation. Yeah. But then in the second protocol, in the second part, I can discuss a more general way of uh, constructing quantum states and the criticality by considering these uh, finite depth channels. So by channel, we basically mean that you're going to take a pure state to the mixed state. And it's just interesting we can prove that this uh, mixed state have some interesting quantum low range order criticality, and which can be also be realized in finite depth. Yeah. So maybe a uh, immediate question is, why should we bother about mixed states? Why should we care, right? Because in the quantum matter, we care about the ground state of a physical Hamiltonian, and those are the pure state we care about. So I guess why why should we care about the mixed state in the first place? So I guess one aspect is mixed mixed state is kind of ubiquitous in the sense that it naturally arises from the decoherence due to the environment, right? So you have a pure state because there's an environment, so environment will have some noise acting on the, this uh, pure state. So you necessarily get the mixed state because there's some coherence. Uh, there's a loss of the quantum coherent information. So indeed, there's been a, a bunch of uh, recent works where mm -hmm. you start from some non-trivial quantum phases of matter in the pure state. And then you ask, if you consider some noise channel, then you get a mixed state, of course. And the question is, how much the quantum order of criticality can survive in this uh, mixed state? So, so there are some interesting uh, recent progress about this understanding the mixed state order and criticality in general. But then in, in this part, I'm going to consider an opposite direction. I'm going to show you that start from some simple pure state. We can construct some, uh, we can have some finite protocol, and that can give you some channel to realize some interesting mixed state, which may have some interesting order and criticality. And the, in, again, the ingredient involves the local operations, like a local measurement and the unitaries, and the non-local communication in the sense that because when you consider some local unitaries, the choice will depend on the entire uh, measurement outcome, and that's then require the communication in a non-local way. All right. So, one example I'm gonna give you is we can show you that if you start from some short train rectangle states of matter, say the SPT order states of matter, you can pre you can transform the SPT to a long range order in the mixed states. Yeah, basically, if you're not familiar with SPT, is just some short range tangle states matter in the sense that if you consider some finite state, you can prepare the SPT with finite time. 
yeah. But then at the same time, uh, it has some non-trivial feature on the boundary and uh, boundary of the system uh, in most cases. Yeah. All right, and let me also try to draw I a guess conclusion actually with, with people. SPT, you have to, uh, if you wanted to, you have to worry a lot about the symmetry when you create it with your unitaries, right? Uh, so, Not trying to say um, so if you wanted to preserve the symmetry, then it maybe it takes it's harder to generate. Is that right? That's right. That's right. So that's right. That's right. If you preserve the symmetry, then the zap into scale with with the season size. But then if you consider the unitary gates that can break the symmetry, then you can prepare this phase of matter in, in all one time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you if you forget about symmetry, it's still a short range tangle state. It is yeah. only non-trivial when you enforce the symmetries. Yeah, yeah. But then anyway, because we are allowed to break the symmetry in the circuit preparation, so then it is a trivial state we can prepare easily in the lab. And then, so previous work has shown that, you know, if you start from some non-fixed points, SPT, then the typical post-measurement trajectory has some long range order. And, uh, but our protocol really show you that it is a universal property of the phase. So that means if you start from any point, any pure state that belongs to some to SPT phase, then you can always convert this pure state to be the long range order. So the convertibility to the long range order is a universal property of the phase. So this we can prove it quite easily uh, in our protocol. Yeah. So let me just give you a simple example for the SPT. So in one day, people discuss this uh, Z2 plus Z2 SPT phase. So basically, you consider some 1D lattice, and there's a, say you call the uh, outside to be the sublattice A, and the even side to be the sublattice B. Yeah. And uh, you design the Hamiltonian such that it is the so called as the you design Hamiltonian with these are three body uh, interactions. So the poly X on the B will be sandwiched by two poly Z on the neighbors, which belong to the A sub lattice. So this is a three body interactive Hamiltonian, and you can check there's a Z2 cross Z2 symmetry, the part of X on the A sub lattice and the part of X on the B sub lattice. Now, and this is the fixed point wave function uh, in the sense that the correlation length is equal to zero. And there's a long range stream order that characterizes the non trivialness of SPT. That is the part of X in the, in the interval of a sub lattice, sandwiched by the two poly Z on the B sub lattice. It is equal to one, you can check. So, one way to see that is just because in this ground state, it satisfies the Z and Z to be one. So, if you apply a bunch of Z and Z, you can get a long, long range stream order, which is equal to one as well. Yeah, so this is the defining property of the SPT phase in the sense that if you add some uh, on-site uh, symmetric uh, perturbation, then you, so you deviate away from a fixed point limit, but then the string order still survive. The list of string order is some non-zero constants at the long distance. And that is the defining property of the phase. Right. So right now I'm gonna show you that with the inputs of the string order of the SPT, you can have a finite protocol to convert the string order to the two point order. And as, as we know, these are two points, say this is the correlation ZZ order. If this is equal to one, that means you have some, you know, like a fermented order as in the GAZ like order, right? And certainly if you only had this, this is not a sufficient detail, it's a quantum low range order. Because even like a product state, every spin, every spin is pointing up, then you get a ZZ to be one, right? So that doesn't carry anything. But the natural thing is, we also have this the constraint that the product of X to be one. And it is the combination between this, these two conditions that guarantee the quantum low range order in the mixed state. Yeah, and indeed, given these two conditions, we can prove there's an exact statement of the non-trivialness of the mixed state, that is, uh, the state you get cannot be a mixture of a trivial state, where each trivial state is connected to the product state in uh, in constant time using unitaries. Yeah, so using this operator diagnostic, we can, we can prove the mixed state is non-trivial in the following sense. 
Yeah. And in case, in case it is not clear, if you consider the GAZ order, like an all up plus all down state, the ZZ is equal to one and the part of X equal to one. And like, like I read the long range order. But right now, what we get is the mixed state analog of that. So that's why we call the GAZ like a mixed state long range order. And then this is the precise definition for the non trivialness of the mixed state, if you like. Yeah. So let me just briefly mention how do we achieve this? Right. So if, if you start from the precise zero, which is the uh, SPT, then on every on every side of the A sub lattice, you do the unsigned poly X measurements. And of course, you cannot control the measurement outcome, right? But then you are going to record the measurement outcome. And in the second layer of the circuit, you are going to consider some local unitary edge on the B sub lattice. That depends on the measurement outcome alpha. So then, because you cannot control the measurement outcome, so generically, you get a mixed state ensemble, right? There are some probability P alpha to get a measurement outcome to be alpha, right? And the, for each alpha, that corresponds to a pure state, like a precise zero, at the projector, and the ATM by the onside unitaries. Yeah, so that gives you the mixed state. Sorry, and that gives you a pure state. And the combination of this gives you a mixed state ensemble because you cannot control different you cannot control the measure outcome for different pure data trajectory, right? So then you necessarily need to use the density measure to describe the ensemble you have, which is this. And right now the ma magic is that um, imagine you want to compute the two points function, like this poly Z, um, poly Z um, two poly Z on different points of the B sub lattice, then you compute this. Then it's pretty simple to convince yourself that. Uh, you get this is the way you compute the long range order, you compute the poly expression value. That is, you have two poly Z sandwiched by two unitaries and sandwiched by a projector. Then there's a you sum over different alpha measurement outcome. And then the crucial idea is you're going to choose the unitaries so that when you conjugate, when you transform this uh, poly Z operator, you're going to decorate by a sign that depends on the measurement outcome in between these uh, two poly Z. Yeah, and it's a simple unitary to, to do this. Yeah. You can convince yourself. And then if you have a unitary, part of an unsigned unitary to be like this, then that means that because there's a projector, right? So you can you may as well project, you can you replace this uh, alpha, the classical number to be the operator. And then the magic is that everything can mute. So you may as well stop over the projector, you get one then you can recover the original string order. Mm. That is the part of X in between two policies in the piece of lattice. Yeah, so the highlight is that if you, if the original string order is non-zero, that already means that under this protocol, the two point function is non-zero. So that give you the symmetry breaking like uh, long range order. Yeah. So basically the idea is that you have using this finite depth protocol, you can provide, you can have a very powerful way to transform the non-local operator to be the local operators. And that local operator can give you some long-range order. Yeah, so that is one way to think about this. So, um, so is this, this part clear? Were you going to ask a question, Garf? Well, let me let you go first. Um, yeah, my question is very simple. Um, so it's about this like unitary evolution of this uh, ZZ string. Is so what is the choice? Sorry. Right. So. Yeah. Um, so the action of this unitary on ZZ mm. is just a product of these outcomes alphas. Yeah. It's like blue, blue box equation. Yeah, that's right. So when you transform this uh, two poly Z using unitaries, you you get a plus or minus one sign that depends on the measure outcome in between these uh, two poly, two poly Z. Yeah. But this is only true when the unitary is a special kind of unitary, like only, only when it's a Clifford unitary, right? Otherwise. Let's no, try, let's try. So this is the unitaries. So, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so it is a part of X. But then, okay. for, for given part of X, for the given X, whatever you apply is a part of X depends on the measurement outcome. So you can see here, like, uh, yeah. Yeah, so it is a particular type of uh, unsigned unitary. I see. So it's only true. 
group or this like very special that's right unitary that's right that's right mm. got it thanks yeah. yeah and so my question was uh right so when i see look at the mixed state with these uh you know the zz correlators you know i guess it just looks like um long range order right mm -hmm. but you said mm -hmm. in the previous slide that there's something non-trivial about it is that that non-trivial though is that uh you know i guess is that just the non-triviality from this like GHZ state where you, uh, you know, for example, you 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 want to, and if you if you try to simulate any long range ordered system, yeah, you know, spontaneous symmetry breaking system, in a finite size system, you'll always get a superposition of like one sector in another sector or things like that, right? Uh, uh, it's only mm -hmm. you only get like you pick one if you take the thermodynamic limit and so on, and you know, it's so that so then. Uh, um, yeah, is the non-trivialness here just uh, this GHC, or is there more? Because uh, you know you've got you made this nice connection between this this uh, you know the ZZ correlator and uh, a string correlator in the SPT phase. It seems like there's right, right, right. more to this <clears throat> than <throat> than just sort of spun. Or you've got some kind of duality going on. I don't know uh, between an SPT and a and a, a trivial, uh, you know, long-range ordered state. I don't know that also. I imagine is possible. But anyways, can you explain? Mm. Yeah, that's a very good, very good question. So indeed, as I will just explain, maybe in the ne in the next slide, uh -huh. there's a duality you can derive on SPT to the long-range order uh -huh. and not characterize the long-range order in the uh, in the Hamiltonian sense. Uh -huh. And then and then another aspect I want to maybe I should emphasize is uh, so our protocol give you. A recipe to transform a string order to the two point ZZ order, right? So you know it's, it's some order one constant. But then at the same time, we also have this part of X to one condition. So let's give you the like a GAZ type of order, right? Because the list the part of X, the symmetry is carried over from the SPT to the long range order we get. So we, we always always have this uh, part of X to be one symmetry here for the mixed state. Yeah. So yeah, so indeed, um, yeah, mm. yeah. So maybe about about the question. Um, let me present this slide here. So basically, one of course the one night one very natural question is what kind of mixed state we get. Can we have a better understanding about the mixed state uh, we, we get? So it turns out because the long range order is only encoded in the subvarieties B. Right, because B had a lot ZZ long range order. So it, as it turns out, the the density matrix on the B, it admits a prefication per psi. So that if you, if you trace out the subnetics A for the per psi, you get a mixed A B. And what is the, and it turns out it is very useful to discuss this list of prefication because it is a pure state. And then we can derive a un, unitary that connects between the initial state SPT per psi to the um, prefication state per psi. Yeah. So for example, this is the application. Imagine you have a per psi state. So for small g, you, you are belonging to some SPT phase. And for large g, you get a different phase, like a GAZ symmetry breaking order phase. And the previous protocol tell you that you can have a measurement and feedback unitary to convert the SPT to the long range type of order, right? And then, so the, you can you can have this uh, correspondent from the pure state to the mixed state. And right now, you can ask, what's, um, what is the understanding for this uh, mixed state? As it turns out, it can be purified as a pure state per sign, for which the parent Hamiltonian you can derive actually. You can derive exactly. And you can derive this because there's a unitary that connects between the initial state and the least uh, purified state. So the Z said that Z, Z, Z term will be mapped to the ZZ term. Let's stabilize the GAZ order, and the GAZ will, will be met with the ZZ. So this uh, exact duality you can derive that characterize the the mixed state order you get in the subnetics. Yeah. So I guess this, yeah, this more or less answer our micro question. Yeah. 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 So basically, our protocol you can imagine we implement some interesting duality between the short range tangle states of matter and the some interesting long range order. Yeah. That is one way to think about our protocol. 
Yeah, and I guess uh, another interesting is, um, as we discussed here, if you churn the initial state, right, you kind of see some interesting transition. And that's critical point will be carried over to the mixed day uh, here you get. And you can ask, yeah, are there something interesting about this uh, mixed date? Uh, criticality because this is the this is the transition for the on the piece lattice, right? As it turns out, there's some some operator will decay algebraic in the algebraic fashion. And um yeah, so for example, the ZZ order will decay like a conventional icing uh, CFT. And the disorder operator is more non trivial because it carries a different exponent. Generically, if you consider the conventional pure state icing CFT, you will expect it to carry the same exponent, but right now it, it doesn't. So it is an interesting uh, mixed state criticality. And uh, the purification states for the B can be understood as uh, you consider two decoupled icing CFT coupled by some finite unitaries, unitaries, and you trace out one sub lattice. And, th th that's how the, and that is the mix that you get. So it is some you know, interesting set of that give you the mixed state, interesting common critical mixed state. And indeed, I see. Sorry. So the um, critical exponents are not what you were expecting just from I seeing a single uh, I seeing universality see class. No, that's right. That's right. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it is something right. more to this than that. OK, got it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So indeed, uh, a better understanding that not require uh, a more analysis, we are, we, which we are kind of working on right now. Yeah. But uh, one, one thing that is we are certain is um, if you because this is some interesting quantum critical mixed state, uh, so a direct diagnostic can give, can be given from this uh, entanglement, in particular entanglement negativity, because right now you get a mixed state. So in order to compute the entanglement structure between two parts in the base of lattice, you need to consider some mixed state entanglement measure, like uh, entanglement negativity. So monomial entropy will not work because it is a mixed state. But then if you consider this uh, entanglement negativity, you see some interesting universal scaling structure for this uh, mixed state entanglement. So you see some linear line is go like log L basically for this uh, mixed state. So, but right now, the, I guess the interesting part is if you compare with the conventional pure state, I can CFT, you know, they follow the same scaling form, but with a different prefactor alpha. So, so and, and you see that this alpha is different. So indeed it is some, it carries some interesting long range entanglement structure but a precise diagnostic, uh, we, we are not sure about that. But indeed, it is, at least from the merit, we know that it is uh, kind of different from the conventional pure state icing CFT. Yeah. Because typically, this alpha is kind of universal. It, it depends, uh, depends on the central charge of a CFT, for example. But then we see a smaller alpha. So what does it mean? Uh, we are not really sure about this right now at this moment. And is that yeah, but is least, the ratio? Uh, is yeah. there a ratio in the slopes here? I mean, I haven't looked at the numbers, I guess, from. But is it like? Uh, um, oh, you mean the ratio between like a CFT and the mixed that we get? Yeah, like the the alphas. Like, is it? Uh, uh, is is the like? Is, I guess because you think of this uh, line as giving you the slope here. Is it? It's giving you alpha, right? Uh, and I'm trying to slope just and, alpha, yeah. And so, uh, is alpha like twice? For the mix, you know, the CFT alpha twice as large as the mixed state alpha, or is it different? Yeah, it, it is numerically such as numerical results such as is like twice of the alpha. Twice. For okay, the, so that's the same factor yeah. two you had on the previous slide. Is that right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> exactly, but uh, <laughs> we, we are not sure. That I think it, it requires a more better understanding. You like don't know why, but that's what it's showing up as. Okay, got it. That's right, that's right. It's a nice observation, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we don't know why. Yeah. yeah. All right, but at least uh, we gave you some interesting handle to engineer some quantum critical mixed states yeah, by doing this on the So that is <laughs> another thing for the future study. All right, and um, let me mention a few words about the generalization because we consider 1D SPT, but certainly you can, you can extend the protocol to high dimensional SPT. And there you can really generate the so-called mixed state long range order, like a mixed state topological order in higher dimensions. Yeah. But uh yeah, let me let me just skip that. Yeah. All right, so the maybe the final few slides. So previously we all discussed this uh, like a measurement protocol based on Pauli measurement, right? But then 
we can also do the inspired by the Gantz Wheeler projection we we also mentioned as Michael mentioned. So we inspired by this, we can try to do the on-site uh, occupational number measurement for the fermium, and hopefully we can get get out some interesting uh, mixed states or some interesting quantum critical states for for the spin setter, right? So then, for example, these are these two other applications we discussed in our paper. If you start from some simple free fermion, spin for fermion, so a so fermion carry the spin up or spin down. So yeah, so we have two flavors of spins. So if so, because of that, you can discuss the spin spin correlation function. And it has been known that say the spin spin correlation function will decay like one over r squared with a separation between two two free fermions, right? And then the interesting is you can have a finite set protocol just by doing the onsite measurement for fermion and then doing the onsite unitary to modify the spin component. Then you can generate generate some interesting mixed states with a different algebraic decay exponent. Yeah, so it is able to change the long distance critical property in the finite gap. That's kind of interesting. And the other interesting thing is um, which is more exotic basically in a sense. You can start from some chain insulators. So this this is some some uh, some trivial state in the bulk, basically because the bulk will have some you know uh, exponential decaying two point correlation function. It is only non trivial on the boundary because it can carry some uh, carrier edge mode, uh, basically for these uh, chain insulators. So but non trivial thing is you can have a finite jet protocol to convert these uh, gap states of matter to a critical state of matter in the bulk. So then the two point function in the bulk will have some algebraic decay structure. So it is an interesting example where the quantum criticality can emerge in the finite gap. Um, you know, in all one time basically. So like yeah. the traditional situation is we have say long range order at uh, zero temperature ground state and we turn on temperature. That's our channel. Right. And then some things survive and you get uh, long range order at finite temperatures. But it sounds like what you've got mm -hmm. here is you have something at like zero temperature where you have your which is your pure state and you have one phenomena there and you pass it through a channel. Now it's no longer temperature. It's some other channel. Right. Uh, uh, and you're getting. Are you getting new phases of matter this way? I mean, is that a, is that a, a, a summary of your talk? Is that? I think so. Think so? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a very good summary for, for my talk. Yeah. I see. Yeah. So and, you and, gave and, it a handle And who to knows what, how stuff. rich this could be very rich because each different, you could have different uh, channels you send things through and, and, who know, and you can get different things. And so. No, that's right. That's, so, yeah. and, so, so then, uh, then maybe it's important for you to to tell us so exactly what are the what's the general characteristic of this channel is it you just have to do local unitary with with measurements that uh, are like these uh, um, with these non-local communication and then that's it so there, that's it that's it yeah. so there's a kind of mm. locality here which may not be quite present in a turning on temperature um, yeah yeah yeah, but uh, mm -hmm. oh, let, let me, maybe let me mention the next slide okay. and then I'll conclude yeah, yeah, sure. with this uh, open question sure, yeah. discussions. Yeah. yeah, that'll be helpful. Yeah, so for this uh, final example, so we, we start from this, you know, we, we can realize the quantum criticality in all one time, even from gap states of matter. And the essential idea is based on this uh, older work, first by Gavin McDonald and uh, and the more recently, but by Xin Xiaolu and collaborators. So basically, what they find is if you start from some 2D uh, chain insulation states, then all, it, uh, although the bare fermium, they are kind of short range correlation, they decay exponentially with the in the bulk, right? But then if you decorate the fermium by some non local operators, that depends on the global occupation number operator. If you decorate this uh, fermium, it is like you attach your flux for the fermion, you transform it to a bit of boson. And it turns out this uh, chain insulator can be understood as some condensate for this uh, boson. So that gives you the uh, algebraic decay uh, in the bulk. When, whenever you decorate this uh, fermion by some non-local operators. And uh, at the same time, 
That also means that if you start from two copies of the chain insulin state, you can try to compute the spin spin operator, the correlation function in terms of spin, and you can decorate the spin 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 correlation function by some non-local operators, and that can give you some algebraic decay. Yeah. And right now, our protocol is just that you for every, for every site, you do this uh, on-site Fermi occupation number measurement. So then, and you provide some feedback in a way so that you can transform these non-local operators to be the local operators of the S plus and S minus, and not give you the critical order in the block. And more specifically, yeah, we just consider on-site Fermi measurement, and then we provide some unitary depends on the measurement outcome. Yeah. Let me just give this detail, but uh, the, the button line is you can get this uh, two points function, which is as in the original non local operators, and that gives you the algebraic decay. Yeah. I see. So, so I guess uh, for the second part, um, maybe let me go to the ne next slide. Um, yeah. So basically, for this uh, second part, indeed, the protocol is like you consider some local measurements and the local inventories uh, that depends on the global measurement outcome. So in this uh, second part, we basically that protocol you can you can imagine it is a useful way to for converting the non-local operator to be the local operators. So, so if you have in mind what kind of non-local operator you have, then you can try to consider some protocol to convert this uh, non-local operator to be the local operators, which may give you the long range order. So that's the common spirit uh, in this uh, part two of protocol. But the spirit for the part one is more diverse. Like you have, really have different ways of uh, realizing uh, different order or criticality. But using the but those order of criticality are conventional grounds there of a uh, Hamiltonian. But so the, but the second part is more. Yeah, but the second part is really give you some interesting uh, novel mixed states of matter, because it provides some. Yeah, you you see some you know, uh, long distance property that is very different from the pure states. Um, uh, criticality, for example, yeah. So, so again, this, this brings out the open question that is certainly there are more interesting order we can try to realize in a very efficient way. And the second part is what are the fundamental limitations for the about using this measurement feedback? So right now there are many states we can we may not be able to prepare easily, but uh, in those cases we are not sure it is because we didn't think hard enough or there are some fundamental reasons. So that you can prepare, you cannot prepare some state efficiently using measurement and the feedback. And certainly, and maybe the, the other question is, what are the entanglement structure for this uh, mixed state quantum critical pool, quantum criticality we get? Uh, I think they, that require a final analysis because it is not something conventional. It is not like quantum critical state in the ground state of a Hamiltonian. So it's something kind of different, something exotic. So yeah, I think that's how those are the question we are. Yeah, that may be interesting for the future. Yeah, yeah. So thanks for that. All right. Um, question. So that's it. I don't know if anybody else wants to clap, all right, I'll clap. <laughs> 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 uh, all right. So uh, any questions? I've asked a lot of questions, so I'll save my last question for uh, uh, the end. Does anybody have any? Right. Right. Uh, anybody have any uh, questions? Um, all right, maybe while you think about that, I'll ask my question. So uh, uh, what's the role of locality in this proto in these protocols of yours? Are you breaking locality when you go from your, in your pure state to your mixed state? <clears throat> I guess the short answer is yes. Short I'm breaking the locality yes. uh -huh. in the sense that in the sense that I, I do require a non-local communication. Non-local right? communication. That's that. That's right, that's right. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's one big difference from temperature. You know, temperature isn't going to violate locality, I guess. No, that's right, that's right. Uh -huh. So it's different from your heat up. You just increase the, the heat, add, add, on, add some heat for the ground state. Uh -huh. So it's, I think uh -huh. it's different from that uh -huh. in this aspect. Yeah. But it's not a non-locality. Oh, it's non-locality in the classical information, but the quantum information is not 
is local. There's something, com some mixture of classical non-locality, non but quantum locality or something like that. Because it's just the class, it's, right. it's just the classic, yeah. the measurement information that instantly can propagate anywhere in the system. But the, uh, uh, um, uh, but you're not allowing, you're not, it's not like you're creating a, any operation in a circuit directly that connects one site with some other arbitrarily distant site. That, that's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. So it is very interesting to me in that aspect because the non-locality comes from classical part, yeah. right? But it turns out this local classical part plus the local quantum part, you can create a quantum long-range order in that sense, right? So this hybrid idea yeah. that is interesting. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's also kind of opposite to what we might normally think of. For example, um, if you think, you know, f uh, we are you know, like, I, I'm sure you know about the Born, I guess it's called the Born approximation, where we decide that atoms, the location of atoms mm -hmm. in a crystal are fixed, right? That the, so the classical modes are like the location of the atoms moving around and, mm -hmm. we, and, and we think of a crystal. So those modes, those, we freeze them and stick them in somewhere, in, you know, on a crystal and we forget, it, we forget about phonons and we write down a model of like Hubbard model or something like that, right? But so there, the classical modes are slow, <laughs> right? And the quantum <laughs> things are fast. But uh, here you're going the other way around. The classical thing's super fast. It spreads across the system instantly in one time step, but the quantum things are slow. So it sort of converted mm. the order of the uh, uh, of a, a traditional setting, maybe. Aha, aha. Yeah, that's a that's a very good observation. Yeah. Mm. That's a try. That's a try. I see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Um, mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So. Right. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? Um, does your work relate to these measurement induced phase transitions? There's mm. also quantum channels uh. there and topology and maybe and uh, um, Right. Have you thought right. about that? I guess. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I would say kind of, uh, it's very different in the sense that so there uh, the, the order or some interesting you know, entanglement transition. So that that cannot that cannot be under, that cannot be captured by the linear observables, right? You have yeah. the, you need to do this some post selection so that uh -huh. you can uh -huh. measure the entanglement individual pure state trajectory yeah. and then you do the average afterwards. Uh -huh. So yeah, so not required a post selection, but and in that aspect it is very different from our border code. Yeah. Because I guess I've been, hoping, to, I've been hoping that solution. this kind of stuff you're doing is a solution to the, the post-selection problem, that you might get similar things happening without having to do post-selection. That's, I guess. Yeah, I'm yeah, that's the point. point. That's why I'm also, hope, also hoping to, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. So the, so the concrete question is this. So in these uh, measurement hybrid circuits, you can realize some interesting you know, older, maybe topology in the long time, but then, not quite a post-selection in the sense that if you consider ensemble itself, it's featureless, right? But then the so question is, in these uh, hybrid circuits, can you, if you, after you do this, uh, do this uh, local measurement, can you consider some feedback so that, uh, so, so that different pure states can be kind of, have some more structures, so the ensemble itself can also reveal some interesting long-range order by providing, by providing the feedback in the mid-circuit evolution. That is yeah. a concrete question we are kind of thinking yeah. about. Sorry, can you say that I again? Do... Did you catch that, Garo? I did. I quite didn't quite follow. Uh, um, I think I did, but I'll, I'll let him. Okay. Uh, restate. Yeah, yeah, can yeah. Rest, so can you restate that one so more time? Because, that, uh -huh. right, because in, in these uh, measurement hybrid circuits, uh, dynamics, right? So the the yeah. reason you require the post selection is because. If, if you because the first is you cannot control the measurement outcome. So if it, if it evolved those uh, hybrid circuit for a long time, 
you the proper description is you consider the ensemble of this uh, post measurement state, right? Yeah. Post ensemble of this uh, measurement pure state. But then the the question is, but then the difficulty is, if you look at the ensemble itself, you cannot see any transition, right? right. You cannot see any transitions. Yeah. Because the, the ensemble is just featureless. There's uh -huh. no feature basically. Yeah. Got that. Much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So then the 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 question is, in this uh, hybrid circuits like a measurement monitor circuit. After the measurement, can you consider some appropriate uh, local unitary feedback? Yeah. Such that for a long time, the ensemble itself may okay. again show you some interesting order or transition, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's kind of what you're hoping for. That's yeah. what you're hoping for, yeah. So you're <laughs> yeah. sort of approaching yeah. it from a different angle, but maybe you'll get to the same place. Mm -hmm. that, that's right. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. But I guess, like, uh, you know, these two things converge. Uh, when you like when you no longer like allow these unitaries to be totally random, rather uh, have some kind of like symmetry built into these like random unitaries. Uh, for example, the Ising the Ising model, right? In the Ising model, uh, you can you are just measuring the ZZ operators and X operators, right? So ZZ operators. Uh, building entanglement and the measurement of like single qubit x operators uh destroy the entanglement um so you know by having a competition between these two uh, these two terms you can arrive at either like an area loss scaling or volume loss scaling right but at the same time if you allow for error correction right, for example like whenever you measure zz equals minus one uh, you correct that and um, and steer it towards like z equals plus one state. Uh, you're kind of like achieving the post selection by doing the error correction right away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So it sounds like very similar to your protocol, but it is also realizing this like area law versus volume law entanglement phase transition at the same time. Yeah. Is I there guess, is there a paper Gaurav, that are... does that? I forgot. Is there a paper uh, yes, that does that? Yes, there's a paper. Yeah, there is a paper, yeah. So you're citing somebody's paper, good. Maybe you, uh, are you aware of this yeah. paper, uh, uh, Peter? Um, yeah, I think there are some recent work about using this uh, feedback, like an error correction scheme to try to recover the order uh -huh. in the next state. Yeah, I think there are a few papers about about this, yeah. Uh, but, you're, but what Gara was talking about was actually a uh, measurement-induced phase transition. Oh yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, I know, I know, yeah. I know. yeah. yeah. I know, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, conceptual is, so there is a bit like, how do you decode the order in this ensemble, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. And I think, I believe there are some protocols if you consider simple poly, you know, money circuits, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm. The Clifford circuit, I think there's some, there some ways to go around this uh, post selection issue. In the Clifford circuit, there's a way to get around post selection. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you do that? How? Yeah. Um, I think one word is by uh, Yao Rong and Fisher, where you know they do this uh, cross entropy benchmark. Oh yeah, the cross entropy for benchmark. The, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm not sure that. Yeah. We, okay, I don't know it deeply enough, but I don't know if that. I, I worry about because you're using classical simulation, you can only get to so large a system size still to solve the problem. So I, right. Um, so it's sort that's of right. that's right. That's so, sort of yeah. uh, it, it, <laughs> it's good for the present kind of solution, but not for the future. <laughs> Maybe. Um, yeah. All yeah. right. Great. Well, let's, uh, why don't we wrap up? Thank you very much, Peter, for this wonderful talk. We learned a lot today. Uh, and uh, uh, we look forward to reading your future papers for sure. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, um, Thank you, Peter. Yep. Yeah, right. thank you. Yeah, nice, nice to meet you guys. Yep. Oh, thank you. By the way, Michael, is there like a question YouTube channel I can? Or it's like a private YouTube channel. No, it's public. I'll yeah. send you the. Uh, I can. I can send you the link. Yep. No problem. Oh, I see. I yep. see. That's good. Yeah.
You can subscribe right. to our channel if you like. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. Right. Great. Yep. I'll see you later. All right. See you. Are you in Boston, Michael?